Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got a major winter storm building with up to two feet of snow and blizzard-like conditions, along with a tropical storm Nicole has formed, expected to be a hurricane, making landfall into Florida, followed by much colder air. So let's take a look at the overall water vapor imagery this morning. You can actually see all the warm conditions and all the dry air that's trenched over the northeast are expecting numerous record high temperatures today but this is subtropical storm nicole that formed and that is expected to become a hurricane in a couple of days we've got a warm front lifting from the south it's going to bring some shower activity into portions of texas and oklahoma today but we've got numerous troughs coming in off the west coast bringing in much colder air snow and even more rain into portions of california so let's highlight nicole first and we talked about this yesterday having the potential to become a hurricane that did in fact name this subtropical storm nicole it's kind of erratic right now it's big it's kind of elongated but it's gonna start feeling the effects of that ridge of high pressure that's gonna be locked over the Northeast. And that's gonna be able to pinwheel it across. And I think as soon as it turns on a westbound direction, that's when it's gonna be able to intensify into a hurricane. And that is the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. It's moving Northwest at nine miles an hour right now, but they do have a hurricane watches for the Bahamas and off the coast of Florida here with impacts going to be potentially a hurricane making landfall into florida by the time we get into say wednesday night so let's talk about all these record high temperatures all the circles here on the bottom of the screen that is your record high maximum for the day we're talking up to 55 record high temperatures <laughs> all those areas that along the east coast and that's one of the reasons why we're even talking about a hurricane right now in november this could be the strongest november hurricane since hurricane kate back in 1985 so this is kind of a rare event we're even talking about a hurricane landfall into november but it's really only because all these warmer temperatures this numerous record high temperatures is just going to be able to set the stage with that moderate La Nina still in place. The, the dynamics are right. We already got our third name storm of November, and we're seven days in. That's rare in itself already. So yeah, numerous record high temperatures, but all those areas in the box here, that's that's record low minimums. That's complements of that diving trough that's going to be coming in, and that's going to be our basically our snow producer and if not some blizzard like conditions by thursday so here's the setup on the hazard map right now we've got winter storm warnings and winter storm winter weather advisories for a good chunk of uh washington going into montana and to idaho the sierra nevada just get crushed with very heavy rain they're expecting one to five feet of snow and even into portions of oregon anywhere from five to eight inches of snow for them but very windy conditions out ahead of it into portions of the dakotas where it's going to be a nasty week for you uh, with very heavy heavy winds and then we got that blizzard like conditions but you're still dealing with some fog this morning further south that just goes to show you that that warm front has lifted north. So here's the warm front we're talking about. And these kind of like little shortwave impulses are gonna bring scattered shower activity in around central Texas and the North Texas, going into Oklahoma, portions of Arkansas, kind of right along that warm front there. But all the way out into the Northwest, there's all your snow gonna be flying into Montana, going into the Dakotas today. But then some of that snow filters into Oregon, going all the way into Nevada and look at all the beneficial rains that's going to be filtering in for a good chunk of California with multiple cold fronts moving in all the way from San Francisco to Los Angeles to San Diego <laughs> with some beneficial rains but it's all about this ridge of high pressure and it just gets crazy intense warm this week in Alaska believe it or not this dominant ridge will really elevate deepening and man some of these temperatures go from 20 30 if not almost 40 degrees above average by the time we get into sunday we got a pretty significant trough that's going to be diving in underneath 
off the west coast that's bringing to bring the snow and all the heavier rains into california while we're watching the coal form and then really this ridge of high pressure will be the dominant feature for a good chunk of the ohio valley and to the northeast so underneath that here's on the 500 millibar this is your kind of your trough the jet stream that's going to be diving in we saw this last week then this gets kind of the same type of scenario setup going into uh, your your Tuesday time frame with that significant trough diving all the way down into Southern California. This brings some pretty good rain for that region. While we do have the ridge of high pressure that's gonna be locked underneath. And by the time we get into Tuesday, it's gonna feel the effect. So it's not gonna be moving Northwest anymore. It's gonna start taking that westbound direction. And that's when I think it's gonna be able to go into more of a tropical type characteristics and start to intensify when it takes that westward bend. So by the time we get into Tuesday with that trough digging in, that's rare guys to see a slight risk for excessive rainfall. That's why they have flood watches in place for a good chunk of Southern California for, for, for the next couple of days with actually kind of multiple inches of rain. And believe it or not, even in Las Vegas could be picking up some healthy totals uh, from this whole system that's coming across. So this is definitely a rare event and definitely beneficial rains and especially with all the snow and the higher elevations can eventually that's going to melt and that's going to be all you know help with the drought as well so as we go into wednesday there is the setup for wednesday boom we got the trough coming in uh you can see the graph in the bottom right hand corner of the screen that's you know you know quarter inch half inch three quarters of an inch one inch of rainfall so more rain coming back in for california higher amounts on the snow snow uh for, for the sierra nevada going into portions of idaho and to montana there's the high the lurking arctic high pressure that's back behind it that's going to be bringing all that colder air that's going to be filtering in at the same time we've got nicole keeping an eye on the southeast and that's going to start taking a beeline towards uh, Florida. But as we go and look at some of the hurricane guidance, here's the latest update from the hurricane guidance actually potentially might drop it down to all the 978 millibar. The latest update at 10 a.m. did in fact uh, make this uh, landfall as a potential hurricane. So yeah, the hurricane guidance is right on board. So I do feel that westward bend, it's got 24 hours westward bend and that's the part that's going to be able to intensify and i really do feel we're going to have another storm intensifying all the way until it makes landfall essentially say wednesday night time frame into the overnight hour so yeah here's the setup with that ridge to the north here that's going to be able to sneak this underneath put it into a little bit less sheer type of environment. And that's what's gonna be able to help elevate this storm and make landfall into Florida, unfortunately. So they're gonna be hit again, not nearly as intense luckily for as, as Ian was, but still another hurricane strike in Florida is on your way for Wednesday evening. Well, we've got that low pressure center that we're gonna be tracking over Wyoming. That's gonna filter in Northeast and then the Arctic high really starts to deepen now we're talking 10 to 1040 uh millibars that's some true arctic air that's going to be on the table pressing southward so as we get into your wind field there's your wind swath going into florida and i think this actually kind of possibly re-emerges out here into the gulf of mexico but it won't last long because it's going to be starting to feel the effects by the time we get into thursday friday time frame of this cold front that moves through but we're going to be talking heavy snow and blizzard like conditions for a good chunk of the dakotas getting into minnesota but there's the storm surge is going to be a prevalent as well down here into Coral Springs, West Palm Beach, Port St. Lucia, into Palm Bay, down into Palm Coast, all the way up to Jacksonville. So this whole elongated uh, is under a storm surge watch right now and waiting for Nicole to arrive. But man, we're talking a wind. So this storm should have an unprecedented wind field. I'm looking at a pretty large system from this and it's going to bring significant waves we'll have a lot of beach erosion along the coastal regions we could be maxing out at 50 foot waves out here in the open water so that's going to cause a lot of swells 
elevate the storm surge and cause that beach erosions, not just for Florida, but for along the into Georgia, into South Carolina, and potentially even North Carolina as that system gets closer. So, and then the cold side. So yes, we got a hurricane hitting Florida at the same time, we're talking about a heavy snow, if not blizzard, or our first winter storm of the season. So this could be a significant threat because look at the isobars. They really tighten up by the time we get into Thursday uh, evening going into Friday with all that heavier snows, very high winds, 50, 60 mile per hour gusts is definitely not out of the question and all that colder air. So here's the temperatures by the time we get into your Thursday evening. Yeah, we're talking teens and a good chunk of Montana into uh, parts of Wyoming, as well as the Dakotas ahead of that warm sector. There, we're talking low 60s for you know Minnesota, southern Minnesota, but right at freezing in northern Minnesota. So there you can see where that cold front is gonna be by the time we get into your Thursday evening time frame. But we're gonna be talking about heavier snow because the isobars really tighten up, the blues start showing up. We're talking about insane a snowfall rate potential two to four inches per hour at times has that potential and a good chunk of montana going into wyoming but especially in the north dakota and the portions of south dakota and this will actually swing in northern uh minnesota at the same time there is uh nicole coming in shore going to be crossing back over into the gulf of mexico but spread its moisture and then it's going to start feeling the effects of that cold front. So as we get into your, you know, going into Friday night, there's the system with bringing out the snow, bringing heavier snows, extending into the good chunk of the Dakotas by then, going into Minnesota. Underneath that, you got that rain, uh, rain swath moving upward into portions of Georgia, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, going into Virginia, uh, portions of West Virginia. It could sneak into portions of southeastern Ohio, but I'm really not expecting that much for them. But going into Pennsylvania, but especially along the coast here in D.C., start, should start to feel the effects of this storm. And that'll essentially just right up the coast. But underneath that, we're talking a significant storm. We're talking heavy snow and blizzard potential for Northern Great Plains and Northern Minnesota for Thursday morning to Friday morning for this area with intense snowfall rates are likely producing snowfall accumulations significant in these areas. So we're talking extremely gusty winds and could be picking up blizzard-like conditions at times and the impact on this could be a moderate level so this is could be a high impact event and rapid city going into bismarck and those areas be on high alert for things to go downhill quickly by the time we get into thursday morning and for those 24 hours it's going to be pretty insane and we could be looking at upwards to possibly two feet of snow in some of these areas but it won't wind itself down until saturday morning and that's when the system will start to creep into portions of northern uh, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin here. But then it will go up into portions of Canada while Nicole is along the coast. So that by the time we get into Saturday, this could be impacting New York, New York, going into Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, going into Maine uh, with this particular uh, setup. So back behind it, there's the cold front. So it's going to be a significant cold blast. And once you get cold, you're going to remain cold for an extended period of time. So this is your Sunday morning temperatures. All these areas in blue are your below freezing temperatures. And that freeze line reaches all the way into Oklahoma, goes into Arkansas, as well as into Tennessee, with even 36 showing up into portions of central Texas. So that's a pretty significant cold blast uh, coming in, and it stays cold. There's no rebound with this particular system. So here's your overall rain for the next seven days. So we're talking about some healthy totals easily one to two if not three inches right along the coast here into california this is probably all snow in the sierra nevadas but 
you know, some decent amounts into Utah and to portions of Wyoming. We do have that system today in Texas and Oklahoma, and we have another system come back through Southern Texas. But all this up here is mainly in the form of snow, but there's all the rain that's gonna come with the coal, especially locked over Florida, into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, going into Virginia, West Virginia. Like, yes, the peak of it, Southeast Ohio, not much for the rest of, you know, Indiana and uh, Illinois, but this will swing into Pennsylvania. Those areas in upstate New York going to New England will see some beneficial rains from the remnants of what will be Nicole. So there's your snow with one to five feet of snow coming for the Sierra Nevadas. Plenty of snow for Utah going into Wyoming. But there's the major snowstorm that we're talking about into North Dakota, South Dakota, going into northern Minnesota. And some of these areas could max out to up to two feet of snow coming up for your Thursday and your Friday time frame. But what gets insane is what happens in Alaska <laughs> with that ridge is going to be dominant over the top. Typically, when Alaska gets warm, the lower 48 gets cold, and that's exactly what's going to happen with this extremes coming in. We're going to be elevating those temperatures all throughout the week, and by the time we get into your Sunday time frame, the 13th, yeah, we're maxing out at almost 40 above average temperatures in Alaska. That is a crazy warmer, you know, well above average temperatures for them. And that puts the EPO in extreme levels. So with the negative EPO, that's the reason why Alaska gets warm and it goes off the charts, guys. This is crazy insane to see something like this by the time we get into the middle of the month. And that puts all the colder air into the United States. So once you get that cold front at your house, it's not warming up for a while So because the teleconnections are heading south and they remain south for an extended period of time. And you, how you would read this chart, the overall average highs and lows by the time we get into your 14th to the 19th time frame, any area that's in green, we would be looking at 11 to 13 degrees on average, below average temperatures over that five day span. So that's some pretty cold stuff. And all the purple would be almost 20 degrees below average. And it doesn't, get warmer it doesn't get any warmer than from that the p a goes positive by the time we get into your week heading towards your thanksgiving and that just implements the colder air into the central and eastern two-thirds so but yes by the time we're approaching thanksgiving we're still cold and will remain cold for an extended period of time so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.